Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope you guys are all having a good day. Um, obviously, you guys know I'm not a TA guy, but I do like kind of doing time-based studies and certain things on occasion. Um, so I'm going to do that for you guys today regarding Bitcoin and the total market cap of crypto and the four-year cycle that has occurred previously and what that might potentially look like moving forward into this cycle if we were to repeat something similar, uh, as well as I found an interesting uh, discussion about new world currency, uh, talking about BRICS. Um, it's a quick interview that I'll play at the end of this for you guys. Uh, just briefly, um, pulled up both the crypto total market cap as well as the Bitcoin to USD chart. And this is going to be about the Bitcoin block reward happenings. Um, if you're not aware what the block happenings are within Bitcoin, uh, as part as Bit uh, as part of Bitcoin's coin issuance, miners are rewarded a certain amount of Bitcoins whenever a block is produced, which is approximately every 10 minutes. When Bitcoin first started, 50 Bitcoin per block were given as a reward to miners. After every 210,000 blocks are mined, which is approximately every four years, the block reward halves and will keep on happening, and the happenings will continue to occur until the block reward per block becomes zero, approximately in 2140. Um, as of now, the block reward is 6.25 coins per block, and it will re, uh, decrease to 3.125 coins per block post halvening. Right now, the halvening is supposed to be occurring uh, in April of next year. That obviously can shift to the left or the right. Um, you can see right here, that's April of next year. So I've got crypto total market cap, these vertical blue lines. Um, if they're blue, I'm colorblind. Um, but April 2024 is when it's slated right now, have the same thing up here. And I've basically just taken previous happening events and kind of did a little bit of analysis around how long it took for the market to top uh, total market cap, how long it took for Bitcoin to top as well. Um, and they're really close. I mean, it's we'll go over total market cap first. Um, so not only post happening, um, how long these tops normally take to occur, but also how long prior to the having uh, having events, uh, the bottoms normally come in. So if we look at the total market cap of crypto, which is all of crypto, including Bitcoin. Um, now there's only three data points here, but 17 to 18 months prior to these vertical blue lines, which again are the having events for Bitcoin, the bottoms come in. Um, if I count back from April, which is supposedly when the next happening event is going to be of next year, that puts us directly at November of 2022, which is when we had that kind of huge panic. Everybody said that we were going much lower. Um, I would argue that that is potentially that was potentially our double bottom. Um, but that is exactly 17 months prior to supposedly when the next happening event occurs. Look at the previous cycle for Bitcoin. Um, the pre previous happening was in May of 2020. Well, December of 2018 was exactly 17 months prior to that happening again. Bottom was in. That was the actual bottom month of uh, the total market cap of crypto. We look back again. Um, July of 2016, we, have a have, we had a happening event. And 18 months prior, so just one month. A little bit of an outlier there, right? Still really close. January 2015 bottom. All right, great. Um, looking at you know potential tops. So from July of 2016, which was a happening event, took us 18 months to top total market cap of crypto. May of 2020 was another happening event. Um, now this depends on how you look at it, but you know we did have a double top event occur uh, during this last cycle. 12 months was the first top. And 18 months from this happening again, so we have 18, uh, the cycle after 2016 happening, and we have 18 to the double top um, after the happening of May of 2020. So 18 months, 18 months again. Now, uh, this is really kind of trying to look at where we may be right now within this cycle. The next happening again is supposed to be occurring on or about April of 2024. Obviously that can shift, but if we measure out from April, 12 months, um, and then 18 months, 18 months would put us at potentially topping for the total crypto market cap um, for the next cycle, this well, this upcoming cycle that we're in, uh, in October of 2025. Uh, and 12 months puts you at April of 2025. So just pretty interesting. Um, 
that's total market cap. Now you'll see Bitcoin is very similar. Again, 17 to 18 months prior to the halvings, bottom is in for Bitcoin. So let's say that April of 2024 again is the next halving event. Compact 17 months for Bitcoin. These are all monthly candles. It puts you right in November, right here, which, you know, I know a lot of people are saying that it's not the bottom, but if you go back time after time in these cycles, they normally rhyme. They don't, you know, 100% repeat, but they rhyme with each other. Um, this, this would say that, you know, the, the bottom may have been in in November of 2022. Again, 17 months prior to the happening in May of 2020 uh, was December 2018, which was the bottom. And 18 months prior to the happening in July 2016, same thing here. Um, takes you to January 2015, that's 18 months. So again, 17, 17, 18. And the same thing occurs with Bitcoin. So after the happening, you've got 12 months to the top uh, in the cycle that occurred after 2012's happening. Uh, in the cycle that occurred after 2016's happening, you had 17 months to the top. And the cycle occurred that after, after the 2020 happening, you had 11 months for the first top and 18 months to the double top. So really, really interesting, in my opinion, at least. Um, again, where does this potentially put us? This is just for Bitcoin. If the happening were to occur in April 2024 and we repeat a four-year cycle again, which by all means we haven't um, disengaged from that repeating yet, uh, March to April 2025 would be a potential top and potential double top September to October 2025. What I find interesting is, you know, which kind of cy which cycle may we be in right now? And, you know, I would much rather... You know, I'd much prefer to be in this um, 17 months to the top type cycle, total market cap, 18 months to the top like we had after 2016, than kind of these really short-lived rallies. So, you know, are we in something like this right now uh, that occurred after, you know, capitulation? Um, we had a little we had a little rise here uh, in 2019, it was not sustainable. And we had our double bottom right here in um, March of 2020, which was that COVID capitulation event that occurred. So, you know, I would much rather have right now compared to where we're at, you know, a little bit of a more sustained out um, aspect where we don't see some sort of uh, crazy spike and then some crazy crash. I would much rather have a longer, more sustainable bull run. But again, this just gives you hopefully a little bit of scope that if we were to repeat a four-year cycle, We've got plenty of time, um, and I'm hoping to see some accumulation occurring, which is healthy. Uh, maybe some pullbacks, which is also healthy as well. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to watch. Uh, and then I want to leave you guys with this. So new world currency, how BRICS nations could impact the U.S. dollar. I'll play this. But Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, also known as BRICS, are attempting to change that. We want to bring in Zoe Liu, a fellow for the Council on Foreign Relations, and she's also the author of a book called Sovereign Funds, How the Communist Party of China Finances Its Global Ambitions. Zoe, thank you so much for being here. So we're seeing efforts to de-dollarize. A lot of that has to do with Russia just trying to separate themselves and other parts of the world from the dependence on the U.S. dollar. Talk to us about that. How would this new global financial system even work? Yeah, thank you very much, Tasmin, for having me. Um, I would take a step back to say, actually, what we are observing right now, Russia, China, um, uh, uh, India, as well as Brazil, uh, to a lesser extent, South, uh, South Africa, trying to band together, build an alternative international currency system is not necessarily anything new at all. And if we look at, take a, take a look at uh, what happened around the global financial crisis, uh, you know, it was at that moment when uh, Chinese central banker Deng, uh, Zhou Xiaochuan uh, talked about the need to build a more diversified international currency system. And it was also at that around at that time that uh, BRICS members started to talk actively talk about uh, how the need to diversify international currency and the international reserve system. So fast forward around 2014, uh, after Russia's annexation of Crimea, it was at that moment when European leaders threatened to kick Russian banks off the SWIFT system. Uh, Putin, as well as other Russian leaders, started to talk about uh, the need to build a Russian version of SWIFT. 
and it was at that time uh, the whole discussion about building an alternative financial infrastructure started to really move forward inside Russia. And Zoe, this partnership, an attempt to become independent from the U.S. dollar, I assume they see a multitude of benefits for them. What are those? And in turn, how does it hurt the American currency? What are the two effects that we could see out of it? I would say the emergence of an alternative currency system really going, it, it, once it started, it is never going to go away. And this provides an alternative, um, alternative means for countries that are under U.S. sanctions to access international uh, liquidity market as well as the international currencies for uh, the settlement of trade as well as other types of transactions. So from that perspective, despite that, there is no direct immediate uh, uh, um, negative impact on the U.S. dollar or the dollar to dollars uh, hegemonic currency status in the short run, um, it is going to uh, restrain the U.S. ability to implement the sanctions as well as the other types of coercive uh, financial statecraft means. So from that perspective, in the long run, if we are observing, if the current, if the current uh, situation, what we are observing, you know, countries like China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Brazil, a lot of all these major commodity exporters, as well as importers such as China and India, bandwagon together, they could potentially uh, create their own uh, currency trading currency system. On the one hand, you have China providing the uh, the means of the, the, the currency uh, for trade invoicing and a settlement, and then on the other hand, the trade within the, the, the trading block can potentially be balanced against each other, meaning you have exporters and you have importers. So basically, a lot of the need can be settled within. That basically is going to make the U.S. dollar no longer relevant for the purpose of all these countries. So that is not going to be a good news uh, for uh, U.S. government. So I found that a little bit interesting as well. <clears throat> uh, one thing of note within both of these, uh, if you look at the happening events um, previously, um, and I, I know that I said, you know, bottom was in, you know, 17 months prior to, 17 months prior to, 18 months prior to, you know, that means that by the time April 2024 comes around, if we are to repeat a similar four-year cycle, um, we've, we've obviously already bottomed. And the best opportunities in this space uh, have already passed us by, you know, sometimes not as drastically, but, you know, if I were to look, you know, this is total market cap of crypto, uh, we were around $93 billion market cap or so for all of crypto in December 2018. By the time the halvening occurred, we were at like a $260 billion market cap. So that is quite the uptick in um and market cap for all of crypto by the time that that happening occurred. Now we did have this capitulation wick down here in March, which put us back down to 113 billion, but the best opportunity was obviously this 92 billion range. Um, so, you know, for, for those of us, you know, I looked in kind of in that June, July timeframe is when I made, again, not financial advice, but made a, a ton of moves in this space. Uh, made a couple more obviously in that November timeframe and yeah, I mean, if that was the potential bottom, I mean, you can look at how these multipliers normally occur, uh, even by the time that we get to the halvening. Um, again, I would like to see some accumulation, but um, if we repeat or have some sort of similar uh, cy cycle during this cycle, um, you're not going to see, you know, what, wherever we drop down to here again in November, we drop down to, what was it like 600 billion? 700 700 billion or so for for the market cap of all of crypto and then um yeah i just you know i find it a little bit interesting so hope you guys enjoyed this video again um this is just one thing that i like to look at uh occasionally i put this back put this together again today for you guys um it puts things in, in context it's not you know definitively saying that we're going to repeat something but it is saying that if we were to repeat it these are potentially some of the time zones that we may be topping in um, and the bottom may have already been in as well. Um, this, you know, nothing certain in this space, but, um, you know, tools like TA and things like that are not, you know, like the Bible. Uh, you don't, you have to use a lot of things in tandem with each other, um, along with fundamental analysis and all sorts of things. But looking at time periods and looking at time frames and, and considering if we were to repeat, 
where could we potentially be topping obviously use this with a lot of other factors but um yep um again potential top uh for bitcoin march to april 2025 if we, we were to repeat or maybe even a double top or a topping scenario occurring in september to october same thing for the total market cap uh, april 2025 uh, or potentially some sort of a double top or a longer more drawn out bull market which would be great uh in or around that october 2025 time frame so hope you guys enjoyed this video i will talk to you when i talk to you thanks bye